OpenAI launched the latest version of its large language model, uh, which they're naming GPT-4.0, uh, with the letter O, just because they want to be different. Um, it's, uh, they're showing off its ability to receive any combination of text, audio, and image, and generates any combination of text, audio, and image outputs. Uh, it, it demonstrates how the models can sing lullabies, as we'll see, translate between languages, hold full-length conversations using sarcasm, and then you'll see it comments on the guy's room. Oh we'll, we'll my live, God, we're screwed. Live, Go ahead, play. Kelly, play this. Hey, how's it going? Hey there, it's going great. How about you? I see you're rocking an open AI hoodie. Nice choice. What's up with that ceiling though? Are you in a cool industry style office or something? Well, can you take a guess at what I might be doing based on what I'm showing you here? Masturbating? I was that's <laughs> hmm. From what I can see, it looks like you're in some kind of recording or production setup. With those lights, tripods, and possibly a mic, it seems like you might be. How do we know that's not a real person on the other end? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe even a live stream? Yeah. In fact, we've got a new announcement to make. That's exciting. Announcements are always a big deal. Judging by the setup, it looks like it's going to be quite the professional production. Is this announcement related <laughs> to OpenAI, perhaps? It is. And in fact, what if I were to say that you're related to the announcement or that you are the announcement? How dare you? Me? Like that? <laughs> the announcement is about me? Well, color me intrigued. Are you about to reveal something about AI? Or more specifically about me as a part of open AI? You've got me on the edge of my... Well, I don't really have a seat, but... This is turning yeah. sexual. What if, yeah, right? <laughs> turn yeah. what, if, yeah, what if she's like, hey, what if she goes, hey, why don't you just take off your pants and show me your wee-wee? Vision and text. Derek? Right, so then... um. <laughs> Play the second one. So in the second one, two different AIs are talking to each other, having a relationship. Like, oh, watch this. Geez. Surprise guest with a playful streak. Honey, ears and laughter, a swift retreat. A moment of joy in the style. That's not AI. That's Nina Jankowitz on the left. <laughs> Someone's going to get that joke. Now back to focus, the scenes complete. So they're singing back and forth to each other, responding to each other in real time. And then there's a third video that I don't have, but you can look it up, of um, the AIs teaching a high school kid how to do basic geometry. And it's like teaching him the hypotenuse and everything. And it's like, this is going to replace teachers. So um, Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, <laughs> says that a key part of our mission is to put very capable AI tools in the hands of people for free or at a great price. And then he... Uh, threatens other AI entrepreneurs and says that the next um, GPT, the GPT-5, is going to steamroll them. So he's like, oh. we're taking over. And then another story, which we also wrote on uh, VT.com, is, uh, oh, by the way, the OpenAI uh, story was written by Mason Clark, our new writer. He is a college student at Ole Miss, so shout out to Mason. Mason! But, uh, so, so the second story is about Meta and how they developed a tool called Cicero, uh, according to so their their um their uh, presentation of it is that oh it's so it's great it works with people we had it play this board game called diplomacy it gets along with people great uh, it shows it's honest it shows it has like teamwork skills it's uh you know it communicates its emotions meanwhile these uh, scientists did a study on the same results and they they think that. Cicero is actually has actually been proven so clever that it's capable of deceiving humans, oh, lying to them, and it shows how in the in the trial run that they were the the tool would um, not only betray other players but also engage in premeditated deception, planning in advance to build a fake alliance with the human player in order to trick that player into leaving themselves undefended for an attack. So they'd say, "Hey, let's team up against L against uh, England, and uh, you know, we'll we'll then we'll go after Germany, saying this to the France player, and then backstabs the France player." Wow. So my question to you guys yeah. is, when one AI is beginning to talk and comment on a room and sing to each other and teach math, and the other is learning how to defy humans and deceive them. Like, what is going to happen? Pull yeah. the freaking plug is what right? I said. As you were talking, I just had the idea that, well, if the AI is that smart, it can figure out how to code or how to access digital or uh, electronic products and oh. maybe shut down your fridge. Hack into shit. Hack it, like, play pranks on its AI owner. Like, hey, I shut down your fridge and all your food is rotten now. Um, 
I can see AI wars becoming a real thing. Oh, it's yeah, it's gonna sure. it's called the art to light war, artificial intelligence against us. Because now think about it. Look how far it's getting advanced. I'm I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a step back because Kelly put this photo up. That that relationship that the guy was having with his phone reminds me of the movie with Joaquin Phoenix. Her, if you guys haven't seen this movie, it's where he, he, like where he dates a sex doll, right? He dates this. Well, but, he's having problems with like his regular. He's he's divorced and whatever. Then he starts dating this thing, and it's it's uh, Scarlett Johansson, and her voice. He's just dating her, and then he all of a sudden finds out. He's like, so where were you? She's like, oh, I was. I have like 20,000 other people that I'm kind of dating. And he's like, what? <laughs> and he's, she's like, yeah, I have sex with all of them on the phone sex too. He's like, you whore. <laughs> so, so, and then going back to what you're saying, bro, this, I'm telling you guys right now, the end could be this very thing. Look at how advanced it's happening every single day, every hour. This thing is getting smarter and smarter and smarter. Then because, of, we, what is it called? We want our lives to be easier. Mm -hmm. um, convenience. Yeah. They're going to put this into robots. You see those robots doing those kick flip stands yeah. and Boston Dynamics. It's only a matter of time. I want to, let's say five to ten years. Bro, these things are going to be in your house. Yeah. It's going to be iRobot. And then Dude, who's the to Democrats, say that they're not going to turn? The Democrats are in control of these companies too. We have to understand. Obviously. The deep State's in charge of them. Google, Microsoft, they're all integrated with the deep state. This is a known fact. So we're all worried about the elections and like, oh, we're going to convince the majority of the American people to not trust the deep state. Meanwhile, they're like, we won't even need humans. These are going to be our new voters. These are going to be our new people who carry out our wars for us. We don't need humans anymore. Oh, yeah. you guys are in the past. And not even Shane, what do you mean? What do you mean this? And don't forget what you're going to say, Brandon. What do you, the hell with the vote? They push a button and these robots come to your house. Your yeah. Second Amendment ain't doing shit. Mm -hmm. You don't think that they're going to be armed? The, their, their bodies are going to be bullet okay, times stronger than a human though, so being. Like, yeah. The military is almost like irrelevant at the point where they almost have to like take over one of these companies because how fast could we have a situation where like these robots, uh, they have a fleet of robots with guns on them that could be stronger than the military like within a few months? Oh, Brent, did, did you guys see that video of yeah. that robot that's legal in... in 48 out of the 50 states and has a flamethrower on its back. Well, yeah. No, I was, I'm just looking up because I thought I read an article and I did about uh, robotic patrol dogs for the border. I mean, oh, they're around. Well, it's because because what makes them. you comply with the government? You know, you're afraid the military is going to show up at your business and, um, you know, stop you from doing what you're doing. But what if you have like a fleet of robots with guns on that could take out anything that comes your way from the government? What were you just saying, Ralph? You know, oh, it's, yeah, Brent, uh, Brandon, it's scary. And guys, it's not slowing down. There, I, I forgot which. Uh, which he was like a head of AI. He's like, the, look at, by the way, Kelly, play this. Guys, look at this shit. <laughs> this thing is real. That thing is real. Uh, and it's sold in 48 states. California doesn't have it. And by the way, that is some scary shit. Well, the funny thing is, I saw that and I immediately thought the dog had like projectile diarrhea. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't see it Look coming at that out of the thing, front. I thought that was the sex robot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, so there's another. So yesterday, Google had this huge conference, the developers conference for AI. They call it IO, I think. And uh, it was protested by all these, you know, Palestine protesters. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Like, what are they protesting about now? But I was actually listening to one of the protesters and they brought this point. They were like, Google is using a tool called the Gospel. Mm. Uh, is is uh, in business with the state of Israel and is training their targeted AI model. It can target people on a battlefield and tell them when to hit. Uh, in like against the Palestinians in war right now, and Google's using this to train their AI model to get stronger at this and probably going to sell to the U.S. government, and then it's going to be like game over. Like oh. we're never going to see the end of it. So like. You know, these Palestine, Palestine protesters, usually they're just full of shit. But like that person, I was like, OK, they might be onto something where we have these little wars on the border in like the border of like of the empire, if you want to call it, like Ukraine, Israel. Uh, but like right now, they're really just testing technology to make it good for the real wars that are going to come. Yep. Yeah. And that shit is like that. That is not going to be fought with human beings. It's going to be fought with all this insane. Oh, yeah. And then, and then yeah. we're none because and this guy, I think it was called. Um, it was a documentary. Oh, Transcendent Man. It was a documentary from this guy that's really into this. He wants to, like, try to bring his father back. I think they have cells of his father. I might be mistaken, but this guy, it, it, it's the guy that was a, a expert in this AI thing. He's like, think about this thing is going to be, its brain is going a million times faster than ours. This thing starts to think for itself. He goes, and who's to say? He goes, I know. He goes, this is inevitable. The way that we look at an ant, when you see an ant, you just go, dead. I don't give a shit. This thing is gonna look at us like we're a nuisance, like we're we're bot, like we're bothered. It's already starting to think and have an attitude and try to deceive, bro. Mm -hmm. That could be that's the end of times type it, shit. It mm -hmm. might be because I listened to too much Rogan. I hadn't got there yet, but I was thinking in terms of like controlling the population or decreasing the size of the population. Once you once you have these 
sex bots that will take care of the basic needs of men, uh, you will have a very uh, inorganic issue coming to reproduction in yeah. terms of decreasing the population, and they they get look lifelike like that and and integrate into with I don't know if you can integrate into Neuralink where you have like these natural responses yeah. plus these robots plus a relationship it's gonna it's gonna it'll be a great way to reduce population and I, and I cannot wait for the because you know with anything there's gonna be problems with like imagine when the sex robot thing is, <laughs> and you have to return one and you're like listen yeah. or this thing oh it get, you get stuck or, or, <laughs> that's what I'm it was giving me a, like listen uh, i know this is weird um it was giving me a, a blow job and it's stuck. There's gonna have to be a hotline oh, when you call. Oh yeah, it's there's gonna be some horrific you. accidents from it initially. Oh, well, of course, or it yeah. starts getting jealous. Like you bring a friend over, it's like, who's that bitch? And you're like, oh god, are so you cheating on me with the MacBook? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. the refrigerator. Yeah, what do you see in the microwave behind okay. my back? I saw your finger in the microwave. You <laughs> what scares me isn't. Okay, so you guys mentioned about government regulation, but at this point, if our government tries to regulate it, what's what's stopping another government from picking up that technology and continuing to expand it and use it as a weapon against us? So it's not even like it could be a government agreement to stop this. It's got to be like a global initiative where we all agree, every right. country. And how are you ever going to get... We can't get our own citizens in our country to agree on anything. You're going to get world leaders to agree that we have to have some type of governing body for artificial intelligence. Well, and then you have these we, two. Oh, sorry. I was going to say Tucker says we should just blow up the data centers. Well, well I mean, you have these two schools of thought now, though. So, like Larry Page, unfortunately, for example, um, he's he's uh, labeling people this term called a speciesist if you want to restrict the AI or put regulation on it. Because you know, a lot of credible like people God. are saying that we should treat AI like when nuclear weapons came out and try to regulate it. But you know, he's trying to create an AI god, Larry Page. And that's why Elon Musk originally tried, uh, started OpenAI because he wanted a competitive force against Google. Oh. But um, so you know we have some crazy people like that, like at the with all the resources of Google trying to create an AI god, um, and then the people trying to regulate it. But yeah, like you said, um, if you try to regulate it, other countries will get ahead of you. So that's kind of the battle that's going back and forth right it, now. It'll it'll be a straight up AI war. They'll have to design an AI that'll battle the bad AIs, and we're gonna have like literally Star the Wars. rise of the machines out of what? out of uh, Terminator. Terminator, yeah. Watch watch iRobot. Oh. Well, there's already I mean there's already two different AIs because like if you want to go to Gemini or ChatGPT, there will be certain things like there's a political leaning on some yeah. things. Mm -hmm. So that like honestly, and I'm not like an Elon fan boy, mm -hmm. but I use Grok. Is it Croc? Is that yes, what it's Croc. pronounced? Because I have a blue check mark, by the way, at the Rob Show or Rob okay. Show TV, whatever, find me. <laughs> but I use Croc because I feel like it's more impartial than it, Gemini is or ChatGPT. It kind of calls it down the middle. So there's already now politicized like AI, and there's already two different camps. Well, I'll, I'll, in fairness to the Google Gemini, you know, is putting out like, you know, recreating the forefathers as black or <laughs> whatever, whatever, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, you ask it a question about me thus far, even Google Gemini is incapable of saying anything bad about me. So oh. that's very flattering. Let me try uh, it right now. What do, yeah. I, what do uh, I think? It, is Conspiracy is Viva Fry an asshole? <laughs> You're doing it right. How do I? F-R-I? Yeah. F-R-E-I. -E -I. Or look, David Fry. All he's doing, I love your shirt. Oh, yes. Who, what, when, who, where, who, why? why? This began with the fed napping of Gretchen Whitmer when I was Whit covering it. I just added the, the H like the Stewie the Cool who, Whip. The, the cool <laughs> and then when we were discovering the fact that that was a fed napping plot, and then we discover that Jan Six was a fed surrection. Yeah, and then you find out that it's the, the hey, it was good that there were so many feds in the in the, in the crowd. According to Gemini, David Fryheit, also known online as Viva Fry, is a Canadian lawyer with a multifaceted career: YouTuber, lawyer, and politician. Oh, wow. <laughs> Failed politician. Well, yeah. <laughs>